17 from the floor, 22 points, uh, three assists, four rebounds, uh, just a fine all-around basketball game. We've been talking about uh, nostalgia here. We visited with Oates Legrand, the radio broadcaster who played in this tournament 50 years ago, and I believe we're going to go down to the floor now and Jeff Passel, who is visiting with a gentleman who has seen an awful lot of Minnesota basketball. Okay, John, this is Art Rusterholt from St. Paul, and believe it or not, Art has seen every boys' state high school basketball tournament, every girls' state tournament, at least part of it anyway, since 1929. That is a lot of basketball. That's right. Right. Is any one year that uh... starting with the visitor, Leona Connor at forward number 14, high lead. Pelican Rapids at forward number 12, Tim Rogelstad. Forward number 44, Tom Paskowitz. Forward number 50, Peter Larson. Center. 54, Jim Glowacki. Center, 54, Steve Yulpey. Guard, number 20, Matt Malley. Guard, number 22, Craig Hogsrew. Guard, number 30, Jim Galkowski. Guard, number 34, Pat Westby. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pelican Rapids High School Band will lead us in the national anthem directed by Jack Couture. two ball clubs primarily they don't they, they stick with the same starting five uh, we might see Waller who had a big game 14 points against St. John Prep yesterday off the bench for Pelican Rapids but uh, Connor pretty much sticks with the starting lineup all the way and stamina may be a big factor in this ball game I think it could be but in a state championship game the adrenaline is oh, yeah. really flowing and you're just going to play tiredness or not they're going to play through that Minnesota State High School League Boys Basketball Tournament is presented under the authority of the Minnesota State High School League. We'll get to the rest of it later. Tommy? A couple of 54s jumping it up, and Pelican Rapids going to our left with the ball. That's their gun, Pat Westby. 20 points in the first game, 26 in the second game. Ball almost gets away from Halgrud. Pelican in the dark black uniforms. Turnaround shot, no good, and a whistle, and here's a foul. Going to be called. Connor opens in man-to-man -man defense, and the interesting matchup is Gelkowski on Westby, and he just took him straight man-to-man. -man. It was on Hughesby, first foul of the game. He's Pass played two games, Tom, and hadn't scored yet in this tournament. I'm certainly no stranger to anything like that, remembering my playing days. Familiar defense, 1-2-2 one, two, two zone with Pat Westby on the point of the zone. There's the ball pulled out of there by... Hughesby and now a whistle and a foul. The officials in the game, Dick Kelly, that's Marv Winslow of Mankato. Dick Kelly is calling the foul. Visual filming, videotaping, or other recording of this event is strictly prohibited without the express permission of the Minnesota State High School League and WTCN-TV. All rights to the event and presentation thereof are reserved by the Minnesota State High School League. Shot by Rogelstad, no good, and the follow-up shot is good by Hughesby. <laughs> How grew it at it? They're coming with the 2-2-1 two, two, zone trap here. They're trying to get Lee in the position, but they settle back into their 3-2 zone. That was 
hog runs first basket of the, of the tournament. They've had two starters who hadn't scored until the championship game. Driving down the lane, that was Malley missing. Here's a follow-up shot, no good, and coming away with it is Steve Hughesby. Boy, those Potter numbers. Tough to see. Here's a pull-up shot, no good. And jump ball is called. And the jump ball, Westby was in there battling on the board. Ball was a little bit short, and he got tied up for the jump. Coach, when was the last time you saw a team playing in the championship game that had two starters that hadn't scored in the tournament? Yeah, it's not very often you can do that, but it means that you've got some other excellent players on your roster. Galkowski jumping with Westby. Pelican Rapids with the ball, and the shot is good by Rogelstad. And it's 4 nothing. Pelican Rapids. 6.20 remaining first quarter. Pelican Rapids will play a 2-2-1 zone trap, but they're not aggressive in it. They'll come right back into their stand-up zone defense. I Lee. I don't know if that was a pass or a set shot. It looked like a lob pass, but it hit the rim. Rogelstad, he loves that spot, and you can see why. And Pelican leading 6 oh, yeah. uh, Coach Rex Haugen, in his 22nd year of head coaching, comes into the game with 289 wins. John Nett coming into this game with 580. It's the Minnesota record. Down the lane and shoveling it up, but it rolls off. That was fired up by Glowacki. They called the offensive foul, Tom. He had the baseline drive, but he got squeezed off, and they're trying to get back in to get an angle for the shot here. He leans back in. It's called the principle of verticality. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. <laughs> That's what they put in the official rule book. Westby. Offensive foul. Offensive foul on Westby. Well, uh, turnaround's fair play. Same call. Coach, a bad day for the Big Ten. Kentucky beat Illinois by three. 54-51. They'll go to the final four. Well, the big question there is if Ephraim Winters played. Yeah. If he did play, was he healthy? That's not a bad showing in Lexington. I guess not. Good Kentucky team. Jim Galkowski brought it into the front court. Winona Cotter now trying to get something going down under. The ball is knocked out of bounds by Steve Hughesby of Pelican Rapids. Pelican leading 6-0. 619 remaining in the first quarter. I like Pelican Rapids baseline defense. They're just not going to let Connor drive the baseline. There's a long jump shot at Dandy by Jim Galkowski. He came into the game with 33 points, with 15 and 18 points in the first two ball games. He's been a dependable player for them. Galkowski averages 12 a game. And there you see John. Yeah. Hello. And you heard John Nett. Yeah. I don't we have think we on. have to wire for a sound. I think you can do it without the mic. Pull that mic off of him. I don't think we're going to need it. Peter Larson with that shot. And it is 8-2 Pelican Rapids. Larson had a great ball game yesterday for Pelican Rapids. He really came alive in the fourth quarter. Yanked down about 8 of his 12 rebounds. He's an aggressive player. That's High Lee from Vietnam. Ball almost got away from Galkowski. Fires it up. Off the backboard and in. That's a tough shot, Tom. When you're coming forward, you have to use the glass on a shot like that is very difficult. 8-4 Pelican Rapids. Pass uh, ill-advised. Threw it into a crowd and Winona Connor with the ball. The Ramblers 22-4. The Vikings from Pelican Rapids 23-2. Paskowitz was right there. He played the passing lane, made the interception. Turnaround shot is no good by Glowacki. And here's a foul on Hughesby. That's his second. Hughesby is 6'5", Glowacki is 6'5", so they're, they're fairly well matched up, although Pelican Rapids really bigger. Westby 6'4", Hughesby 6'5", Larson 6'4". So Hughesby. far, Westby's only handled the ball once. Here's a shot fired up by Cotter's number 44, Tom Paskowitz, and now another foul is going to be called. I think this will be a shooting foul. They're going to send him to the line for two free throws. You can see the pass here from High Lee. He gets it inside. Pump fake. Goes up for the shot. Uh, pretty good defensive position, but he got a piece of his elbow on the way up. That's Tony Hughesby who's in there off the bench. He got the foul. Paskowitz. It's the first one and the second one coming up. It is 8-5 now. Pelican Rapids. They led 6-0, but now Cotter is inching back in. We'll see if they compress if he makes this free throw. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to Winona Cotter. Timeout on the floor with a score. Pelican Rapids 8, Winona Cotter 5. When you pay for weed control, it shouldn't have to cost you yield. But it might. The fact is, herbicide stress can cut your yield potential. That's why it's important to use Lasso Herbicide. Even with its dependable full season control, Lasso protects your yield by stressing young corn less than other grass herbicides. Make sure you get all the yield you're entitled to. Protect your yield with Lasso. 
the yield protector. Go anywhere in your home with the hassle-free 700-foot range Polara cordless phone with many other features, only $28 this week only at Combs. We're on a two now. There you have Rex Haugen, Pelican Rapids coach. Both of the coaches are wired for sound. We'll take you down onto the floor and into the huddle. This was a set play and he had a bounce. He threw the ball in bounds. They screened for him on the weak side. He came around, made the jump shot. That's six for Galkowski. That was Galkowski. Averages 12 a game, and he's halfway there now. Rogelstad got it. Been some very nice outcourt shooting here in the early going. We're at 345 left to go first quarter, and Pelican Rapids leading Winona Cotter 10-7. Rogelstad's hit three baskets from that left baseline corner. Hi Lee. They look inside for Glowacki. Malley. Shot short. And is pulled out of there by Westby. Rogelstad's Again, Rogelstad. Four out of four. He's got a spot on that left-hand side. He just pulls up, and they're so concerned with Westby that they're giving Rogelstad room to shoot the ball. They're going to have to change that. Trying to maneuver for a shot, Glowacki, and it works. Use some good footwork in there and head faking and gets his bucket and is 12-9 now. Pelican leads by three. They have the ball. We're under three minutes left to go first quarter. There's a shot falls flat. It was fired up by Peter Larson. He's 6-4, and Connor comes away with it. Their tallest man is Glowacki at 6'5", and they have Galkowski at 6 feet, and Malley at 6 feet. Wolf, their sixth man, is 6'1". Paskowitz, 6'2". Oh, he started to move just as the pass was coming back to him. It just was going the opposite direction from the pass. Here's Wohler. He got 14 off the bench yesterday for Pelican Rapids. Peter Wohler, a cousin to former gopher Barry Wohler, great high school star in baseball and basketball out of Bird Island, Minnesota. And that foul is on High Lee, and that's his second time. Second foul. Young man from Vietnam. Third team foul. Inbounding Peter Larson. Westby. Yep. Oh, boy, oh, boy. He did everything he could. He had perfect position. He had a hand up, and Westby just rose up and shot the jumper right over him. You know, these guys, they draw the emotion out of you. I love this kind of a game when you have that kind of outcourt shooting. My pick to win this game was Pelican Rapids, strictly because of Westby's outside shooting. He's a threat. Highly. Galkowski. They got Fighting over the, the top on the, on the rebound. And it was on uh, Glowacki. Official. That's his second. Dick Kelly, and there you see the motion going over the top. Yeah, they had good rebounding position. They had him screened off the board, and the only way he could get to the ball was to go over the top. Into the front court, that was Westby over to Rogelstad. Larson, working the ball around, maneuvering, trying to get that ball, and now here's Rogelstad. Well, he misses, he's human after all. He was beginning to have us wondering here. He had the same shot, uh, Haile is on him. He gave him room for the jump shot. That time he, he simply missed it. A minute 38 left to go, first quarter. Pelican Rapids leading 14 to nine. Inside, Kloacki knocked away, but traveling is gonna be called on Wooler. He would have been okay if he had not rolled over. You can fall to the floor and pass the ball. You can't get back to your feet. But uh, if you roll over and make progress while you're on the floor, then it is a traveling call. Jeff Wolf now replacing High Lee for Cotter. Number 42. Cotter. That's Wolf with the ball. Feeds it inside to Glowacki. Off balance shot along the baseline. John Nett is not worried about that because he got a good shot. They got the ball inside the zone. It was a good shot. Westby got it again. 16 to 9, Pelican Rapids. A minute left to go, first quarter. On top got, alley. He's got great range. He just shoots it so effortlessly. Just about to say, Jim, that most of the long shots that we consider outside shots are in the 15, 18 foot range, but Westby could put it up from 25. Right, he's got strong wrist. Rogelstad comes out of the lineup. John Nett, the expressions really kind of tell it all. Wolf goes to the line. 
Six one senior, as you see. Erickson in for Pelican Rapids, a six foot senior. He's number 10. 16 to 10. Pelican Rapids leading Winona Cotter here in the first quarter. We're under one minute. Wolf. No press. They're coming right back into man to man defense. That's Erickson with it. Westby looks for screens. Doesn't need a screen. Uh, they're going to have to try to get some kind of a double team on Westby. Uh, he, he's being played well by Glowicki, but he just is, is too big. He'll take him off the dribble and shoot over the top of him. He's three for three, and I think his closest shot's about 17, 18 feet. And he hasn't drawn iron. They've all been right through there. There's a move along the baseline that doesn't quite work. Good dribbling <laughs> by Galkowski as he saves the ball for Cotter. Now, he could get up in that case because he got up dribbling the ball, so it was a legal move. As long as he's got that thing bouncing on the floor, he's okay. Paskowitz. And here's a foul. Saved him a traveling call because he did travel with the ball. Uh, no, foul first. Ball. You can see he puts the ball on the floor here. He gets batted away, tries to pick it up, but he was had it, hit on the wrist on the way through. Second foul on Westby, so keep an eye on that. Looking at the replay, I thought he made a clean swipe of the ball, but the official was on the back side of the play. He was screened out on the call. Nine seconds left to go, first quarter, and the free throw is good. Paskowitz was three for six from the foul line yesterday. Tom Paskowitz, 6'2", senior. Got one out of two and coming away with a rebound is Peter Larson and Pelican with five seconds left in the quarter. Westby, Guess he's who? their man. <laughs> yep. Well, it's going to be automatic. He is a thing of beauty to watch. The tournament's leading scorer. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. Pelican Rapids, 20. Winona Cotter, 12. Devney's Office Products is making a lot of people smile. Why? Because they're selling them Sharp's new SF900 copiers. The copier that works like a copy center at a fraction of the cost and size and increases office productivity. Gets 40 copies a minute, gets big jobs done fast, and its enlarging and reducing capabilities make small print readable and oversized documents manageable. The amazing SF900, the compact copy center, coming soon to Devney's Office Machines Mankato. St. Olaf Hospital's new sports medicine program has the staff and specialized equipment necessary to treat virtually all sport-related injuries. Physical therapists use Cybex 2 equipment to help determine the extent of the injury and to test strength and endurance. Acute care and early rehabilitation can minimize the effects of the injury and achieve the goal of returning the patient to complete participation in his or her sport. For more information on sports medicine, call St. Olaf Hospital in Austin. Ready to go with the second quarter. Tom Westby. Westby was four for four off in long range, and Rogostat four out of five in that first quarter for Pelican. Hughesby jumping with Connors, Glowacki, and Pelican Rapids with the ball, and that is Westby. John Erickson. Wohler is number 40. That's Erickson, number 10. Comes up flat. He still doesn't have it cleared out of there as their legs are tangled. That was Glowacki. The average fan is going to say, hey, with Westby making everything, why would anybody else but Westby shoot the ball? Well, the defense has a lot to do with that. They're going to make him work to get the open shot. Guess who? Glowacki. Glowacki. 20 to 14, Pelican. Pelican Rapids. Westby fakes right, goes left down the lane. Tried to hang in midair to get some balance on the shot. Didn't get it. We got too close. Yeah, right. That was out of his range. He was in the paint. <laughs> Jim Galkowski. Jeff Wolf, 42. They'll go mainly with six or seven. Nice minutes. inside pass. That is Glowacki, or rather, let's check it. That might, oh, wait, it might be Paskowitz. It is. He Miles was Erickson. Pelican Rapids picking up. Uh, you can see the drive baseline. Pulls up, gets his man in the air. A nice slide inside to Paskowitz. He goes up for the shot. Gets the two free throws. First foul on Erickson. Fifth team foul on Pelican Rapids. At the line, Paskowitz. Second shot coming up. Actually, they don't go over five on the board once they get into the bonus. That's a seventh foul already in the ball game on Rapids. Six 
6.54 remaining in the half. Connor is so deceptive. You think they're being, you know, dominated, but you look at the scoreboard and they're always right there. They stay right in the range all the time. That's the amazing thing about that Connor ball club. They don't, you never get them down to where they're out of it. And with John Nett on the bench as coach, if they're close going into the fourth quarter, look out. Jeff Wolf had a really a ripped down rebound on that one. He's not that big, but he really tore it out of there. That's Jim Galkowski to Wolf. They've changed their zone, Tom. They've gone to a 2-3 zone now rather than the 1-2-2. Two, two. Well, Wacky is moving from low out to high post. Anything to get his hands on the ball. They, they want to get it to him. He is their key. 2-3 zone is stronger inside, and they're worried about the inside game. That time, Wacky set a screen, and Galkowski hit the shot. And Potter is to within two with six minutes remaining in the half. Westby, Pat Westby. Came into this game hitting 62% in his first couple of games. He's got to be at least around 80 or 90. There's John Nett. Don't let him jump on him. Cut him off. Don't let him come over the top. Don't let him, let him come over the top on that pick. Just cut him. See? What John is saying is they're setting a screen high for Westby to come off the screen, and he wants his man to step out and get in his way, force him out of an angle. John Nett at age 63 is brimming with life. Now, what John does is he does his, his, his homework, his preparation of practice is perfect, and all he has to do is make minor adjustments. Connor knows what they have to do to win this game. Connor down by four. We have 5.45 remaining in the half. We talk about zones, Tom, 2-3, two, 1-2-2. Two, two. It's the alignment on the floor, and the difference is in the zone, you have a zone on the floor, and depending on how you're aligned, your zone changes. Man-to-man, -man, you're assigned to a particular man. You just stay with them. Nelly is snapping that ball around. Good pass inside to Glowacki. Oh, he almost had himself a dandy there. He nice pass. He the ball out, and the shot is good by Galkowski. Uh, He's got 10. And it's 22-20. Here comes the screen for Westby now. Pelican with a two-point lead in the ball. Turn around. Larson. Shot is a beauty by number 50. That is Peter Larson. Oh. Averages 14 a game. We got four today. He's had 12 and seven points in the first two games of this tournament. Inside baskets are hard to get against the 2-3 zone. Lawacki. He got a swipe at the follow-up. Rogelstad back in, almost travel with the ball, and it gives over to Westby. Here's the screen. He'll dribble off the screen, try to draw coverage. Rogelstad gets it back. He likes that, that left side. There's a shot. Is good by Waller. Good, pa good patience by Pelican Rapids. Two very good teams, beautifully coached teams. The weakness in this zone is on the wings, right here in this area on both sides. If they'll just swing it, they'll get the jump shot right on the wing area. Connor right here's the shot. That's the one they're looking at, as Jim said, and that was Galkowski, number 30. He had 15 and 18 points in his first two games. Connor does a nice job of recognizing the defense they're working against and getting into the vulnerable areas. 12 points now for Galkowski in this ball game. Larson hits the front rim, bounds out of there, and Winona Cotter trailing by four with 341 left to go in the half, and they have the ball. Malley to Wolf. Galkowski, Wolf, baseline, beauty, about a 12-footer. Rex Hoggett is wondering now what he's going to do defensively. They got to his 1-2-2 zone. They're starting to get to his 2-3 zone. Westby, short from the free throw line. Hughesby on the follow-up in and out. And Glowacki says, it's mine. He and Paskowitz give them two good rebounders on the inside. Time on the floor with the score. Pelican Rapids 26, Winona Connor 24. And now for today's TV6 Memo. The Austin Figure Skating Club presents its 10th annual ice show on Sunday, March 25th at 2 p.m. at the Riverside Arena in Austin. The theme this year is A Night on Broadway. A Pheasant Forever Banquet will be held on Monday, March 26th at the Elks Club in Rochester. The annual Lions Club Pancake Breakfast will be this Sunday, March 25th at the Dodge Center Elementary Cafeteria from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. The cost will be $2.50 for adults, $10 for family, and preschool free. And that's all for today's TV6 Memo. KAAL TV6, Austin Albert Lee.
There you see Rex Haugen, Pelican Rapids coach. This team averages 64 a game. They give up 45. They have 258 students. They finished second in this tournament in 1977, and they have a chance to take home the big trophy. Winona Cotter looking for their third championship. They're back to their original defense now. They're back to the 3-2 zone. It's vulnerable inside now. The, the shooting areas have changed. They can get the ball inside to their big men now. Wolf inside Glowacki. Trying to cut down the lane. Cut out of there. Malley, the shot is up and good. And that was Wolf. And we're tied up. 26 all. Jeff Wolf, 6 1 redhead, ties it up. Hughesby and Pelican regains the lead by two. Nice pass from Larson. They went to a high low set. They had a high man posted at the free throw line. They just dropped it inside. Matt Malley. Look for Glowicki to score here. They're going to try to get it into him. Nona Cotter taking their time. They get it inside. Can't do anything with it out the line. That's Wolf. They still want Glowicki inside. Here's a pull up jump shot in and out and back in again. And a foul is called. That was, I believe, Galkowski. It is. And that is a rather chagrin look in the face of Rex Haugen of Pelican Rapids. He didn't like the fact that they gave up penetration. His man got a dribble, beat his man, pulled up for the shot. Galkowski now with 14 points. Can cash in a three-point play. We're tied up. And he cannot give his team the lead with that free throw. Pelican Rapids' Tim Rogelstad. That's his spot. He's short now. He was hitting it earlier. They're giving up no second shots. Connor has taken over on the defensive board. And Westby has been quiet here the last few minutes. Kind of cooled off. Lowacki pivoting down the baseline. Good move. Yep. And Winona Cotter leads 30 to 24. You can make that pass against the 1 2 2 zone. You Lewacki, can get your man inside. He has eight points. Westby, every time he gets the ball now, he'll have at least two men on him. He had it that time. That's one of the reasons. That's Hughesby oh, up basket. over the head. He was got double teamed. We had a collision between two Cotter players. They both went to the floor, and he had the easy basket. We're deadlocked at 30 and under one minute left to go in the half. Galkowski. Shoveled out to Wolf. Gal what a half. Coach Cotter, is the first half what you expected, Coach? Well, I, I, uh, it's a good ball game, and, and uh, I think, frankly, at this point, we came back real well after that good start by Pelican Rapids, and we were really frightened and scared of what they could do. But our kids are playing good defense, and they settled down, and hopefully now as we get into the second half, we can do a better job. You're getting some help off the bench. Wolf, uh, a couple of key shots on the baseline. Yeah, Jeff came in, and he did a good job. He hit a couple of shots. He hit a couple of rebounds for us, and, right. and, and we need that. What are you going to tell these kids in the locker room? 
play the way we've been playing. All right, good luck to you, John. Thanks for stopping by. Let's go back upstairs. I was going to say he has to be fairly satisfied. They're deadlocked here, and that's the end of the first half with the score. Winona Cotter, 32. Pelican Rapids, 32. One glass of milk has enough calcium and protein to help the average dad through an ordinary day. Down to the floor, and Jeff Passold and Randy Shaver. All right, thanks, Tom. This is the kind of game I expected from these two teams, very balanced teams. Yeah, the way it started out, it looked like Pelican Rapids was going to run away with it for a while, but they did a great job, Winona Cotter did, of getting right back into it. Interesting in that Winona Cotter seems to go with a little more balanced attack. The first day it was Glowacki who led them uh, before he fouled out. Today it's Galkowski. He had the hot hand the last couple of games. Pelican Rapids, on the other hand, well, Westby's their main man. And boy, when he's hot, he's hot. He's fun to watch. I want to know if Westby has an agent yet. I like to volunteer. Let's go back upstairs to Tom Riley. This is the 1984 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament. It's yeah, rebound or even a low turnover game. Uh, two teams that are well coached, and they're definitely ready to contend for this championship. Not much pressure, really, uh, away from the basket on the ball. That's probably one reason why there's been only six turnovers. That's right, and maybe the first team that comes with full court pressure could break this thing. Westby of Pelican Rapids going to jump with Glowacki of Cotter. And the guys in gray, Cotter have it. High lead. Shoveling to the man who tipped it up, Glowacki, and it's no good. And Pelican with the ball. We're tied up. Third quarter just opened up. Vogelstad. Ball knocked away, and Winona Cotter gets it back, and they have a chance to regain a lead. Matt Malley. Cotter's biggest lead has been a only two. They're going to give High Lee room on the outside. They don't think he can shoot that shot, but he fooled him. He took it and made it. I wonder if High Lee had a basket on his garage in Vietnam. I don't know, but they had the inside pack back so strong that the passing lane wasn't there, so he did take the shot. Pelican Rapids with the ball. That's Peter Larson. Gets it inside to Westby. Driving. Got it. They're trying to post him up against a, a smaller player, uh, uh, Jim Delkowski. That time it worked. Westby with 14 points. Galkowski hit 8 of 11 in the first half, and Westby with that basket is 6 out of 8. They're rotating Galkowski over to the wing now, and they'll swing the ball and hit him on this wing right here for the jump shot. Galkowski hit the back rim and came out of there, and the rebound pulled away by Pelican Rapids. That was Wooler. We're tied 34 all. Front rim no good. Good position on the rebound by Paskowitz and Cotter. They have the ball again. The Ramblers. Paskowitz and Glowicki do a nice job of rebounding inside. There's a shot from our backboard Billy Camera. The shot turn around shot is a dandy by Glowicki. He has eight points. They're staying with the man-to-man -man defense. They're going to try to rotate Westby. Larson's going to take the jump shot. Larson from the free throw line, and guess what? We're tied up again. 55 remaining in the third quarter. Tom Ryder along with Coach Jim Dutcher of the Gophers, Joe McConnell, and that shot is good by Paskowitz. Oh, defensively, oh, he'd hit four free throws earlier. Right, defensively, uh, they had him double teamed. He still made it. Excuse me. Scores for Pelican Rapids, and we're deadlocked once again. 38 all is the score. You get a feeling this might be overtime. <laughs> the way they just keep <laughs> trading baskets. We thought it would be this way. We think that's going to be the story tonight when White Bear Lake goes up against Minneapolis North. That, with the power rebound and basket, is Jim Glowacki. Connor with a two-point lead. Westby, free throw line. It was the back rim. They tried to set the screen, Tom, for Westby to come off for the jump shot. The defensive end tried to fight over the screen. It was Waller, and he just, you know, th that had set the screen, and he just knocked him to the floor. The foul was on Galkowski, and uh, that is his second foul. Hiley is out, and Wolf is in for Winona Cotter. Pelican Rapids to the northwest of the Twin Cities. Uh, Winona down along the Mississippi, down below Lake City. Beautiful country down there, beautiful country to the north where Pelican Rapids is located. Westby pulls up, fires a 13-footer, and he got it. And we're tied again. He's got 16, and he has seven out of nine for the game. Cotter 
Butler maneuvering Wolf with the ball. They're very patient against the zone defense. They just keep probing the defense till they get the shot. They'll try to reverse this now inside. Malley, Paskowitz, got it. It's just basket here, basket there. Back and forth, Connor leading by two. Look for Pelican Rapids to go back to a 2-3 zone. They're just giving up too much on the inside right now. Shot by Larson. Almost had himself two points, but it skipped out of there, and Glowacki comes away with a rebound. Connor will keep trying to force that ball inside now against this zone alignment. Glowacki. Along the baseline, out on top, Paskowitz. Ball almost stolen, but... Fischel was right on top of the call. No one could dispute the fact about his vision. He was, <laughs> no, he was, he was right there. They might question his judgment, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Joe, he's going to go down to Florida and escape. I'm still up here, Jim, along with you. We <laughs> Joe goes back to Florida to cover the White Sox game tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. Nice pass off. Got down under. Good pass to it. Galkowski made the play. Got the ball. Bounce passed inside. Cotter with a four-point lead. And Paskowitz has six of his ten points here in the second half. He's been kind of the forgotten man on defense there. Right. This is the same play. Waller sets the rear screen, uh, trying to free up Westby. And as uh, Galkowski comes off, he just bangs into it. Timeout on the floor with the score. Winona Connor, 44, Pelican Rapids, 40. There are a lot of things we could claim about butter, but one thing's for sure. We'll never claim it tastes like margarine. Taste the difference for yourself. Mm. Now that's real butter, because butter is made from nature's own fresh milk. Not man's chemicals or oils. Taste the difference for yourself. Mmm, that is real butter. No, we'll never claim that butter tastes like margarine, because butter is better, naturally. And the difference is delicious. Mmm. Final days have begun for Jensen's Furniture of Blooming Prairie, Minnesota. Soon this fine family furniture store will be gone. Soon, 50 cents on the dollar will just be a memory. This incredible liquidation ends soon. The end is near. We've been given a date that we must close. While time remains, the inventory will be sacrificed at unheard of discounts. Everything has to go. Every sofa, chair, mattress, bedroom set, dining set, it all has to go. If you miss these final days, don't ever complain about high furniture prices again. What John Nett said there is don't stand flat-footed, keep circling around till you get the ball. Do not stand still. Their pattern has been, uh, Tom, out of timeouts to come out one series of two, three zone, then they'll come back man to man, and I think you're going to see that right here. Just to give them a change, they'll come out zone. What's their biggest lead? Right, they're, they're zoning right now. Next time down, they'll be man to man. Westby. 22 feet away, he drills it. He loves to see that zone defense. I don't think I'd play a zone against the Pelican Rapids, no. 18 for Westby, unofficially. No. They've changed now and are in a 2-3 zone. They've dropped Westby back inside. Malley, Wolf, back to Malley. This will strengthen her inside, but it'll open up the wing shot right there. There's Malley is all, they're giving him that shot. They really aren't covering him. They're putting their defenses inside with that little hat, and here's a foul. Rip changed his call on that. He called it a jump ball, and then when Hughesby threw the elbow, he called the foul. Yeah, he originally had the jump. Third foul on Hughesby. I've ever seen an official change the call in mid-call. No, here you see the play. The jump was called, and then after, he, he gave the jump signal, then called it. If that was the, the call, it had to be a flagrant foul, a dead ball foul, and that's what he's called now. The elbow was after the jump ball. He called a flagrant foul. It'll be a two-shot foul. I don't think we would uh, want to go to the floor right now and Rex Falcon. He is really... Disgusted. Do we have a, uh, a key thrown on somebody? Well, it was a proper call after. Galkowski. Yep. Did he just give him one? Yeah, somebody one got a the technical. Ball. Yeah, maybe he called the technical foul rather than the flagrant foul. Somebody got the big key. It, had, it was the player. It was a dead ball foul after the jump. Wolf rolls off. Galkowski rebound up good 
Oh, it's getting rough down there. What a battling play, Paskowitz. Paskowitz with four baskets here in the third quarter, and they tie up Wesker. They double team Wesker. He tried to baseline drive. Uh, he really didn't have a shot or a passing angle. I think he'll control this jump, probably tip it backwards to Waller. Jumping Malley and Westby. Westby for Pelican Rapids. Westby much taller. Winona Connor leading by five points. Two minutes left to go, third quarter. For the Class A Championship, State of Minnesota. Rogelstad headed off by Wolf. In, way. We've been informed by the truck that that was a technical foul on Westby. Somebody must have said the magic word, and there is Rex Haugen. If it was on Hughesby, I would agree with yeah. it, and I think probably if it was on 54 Hughesby. Time out on the floor with a score of Winona Cotter 47, Pelican Rapids 42. <laughs> Oh, this is it. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. I just don't know. Oh, we've moved before. Yeah, but never out of the country. You're going to love it, George. I'm a city boy. Oh, it's not that far. Bye, Luella. Long way to the corner deli. I got stores Where am I going to get my newspaper? And another thing, how are we going to get our Social Security way out in the country? Here we had direct deposit. We didn't have to wait for the check, and we didn't have to worry about it. Sweetie, I took care of the whole thing. You did? I transferred our direct deposit at the same time I did our checking and savings account. Oh. We're going to get our direct deposit even way out in the country. Come on. Remember to transfer your direct deposit whenever you move your checking or savings account. That way, your government payments will keep going straight to your account. George, will you help me unload these boxes? Just talking to our new neighbors. I think we're going to like it here. Oh, it's some city boy. <laughs> Direct deposit. It's free. And after all, you've got it coming. Technical foul was called on Hughesby, not Westby, so he did not get a personal foul, but he got a technical foul. Hughesby, apparently, when he was called with that jump ball, said something that irritated the ref. That was Westby on the drive. Rogelstad rolls off. Loose ball, Larson, 15-footer. Got, got it. it. Yeah, bounced around and dropped for him. Uh, Pelican Rapids out of the timeout came with a half-court trap. You'll see it again right here. They'll double-team the ball right here. Looking, looking to trap. They got the interception out of it. Winona Cotter, the basketball. They have a three-point lead. We are at the 105 mark. Left to go, third quarter. Westby has missed only three of 11 shots, and two of them have been inside. Right. Play to Malley. Nice adjustment here they on the double from, team. They really keep him away from that baseline. They don't want him to go along the baseline. Not so much to shoot, but the closer you get to the lane, it can shovel off a pass. Another interesting factor, Galkowski, who had eight field goals in the first half and held to a couple of free throws, or one free throw this half. Wooler, Pelican Rapids, jumping with Malley and Potter. Getting the tip and driving and scoring is Paskowitz. And he has 10 in the quarter and 14 for the game. 49-44, Cotter, we're under a minute in the third quarter. Westby pulls up. He was very closely guarded on that shot. He was hit on that play. He might have had his elbow nipped a little bit. He left it up short. We'll see if they can stay with the trap. Here it is, two-timing the ball. You want to keep it out of the corner in this situation. Cotter going for the final shot of the quarter here. Paskowitz. Oh, they're lucky there. He fed himself on that strange play. Oh, the jump ball here. He got tied up on the baseline. We'll have to jump with 17 seconds. Well, their bodies flying at both ends. <laughs> right. You think these teams uh, want to win this thing? Jumping. Paskowitz of Potter. And Rogelstad from Pelican Rapids. Controlled by Rogelstad. Came out of the circle area to get it. Ten seconds. Who's going to take the shot? <laughs> yeah. They may not get it Rogelstad back to him. Dumps off to Hughesby, and he got it. Oh, and Pelican is coming back. That's the end of the third quarter with a score. Winona Cotter, 49. Pelican Rapids, 46. So today, the forecast for our state reads mostly cloudy skies, occasional light snow in the north and east, a few flurries possible in the southwest. When they come, I'm going to give them all a big hug. My grandchild doesn't have a birthday every day.
then becoming bureaucrats. Art would have been so proud. Proud of his family. Proud of how they cared for me after he died. There's hardly been an empty day since I moved from the farm. I think of friends who are alone, afraid that even their Social Security will be taken away. But they have a friend, Senator Rudy Boschwitz. He helped make Social Security safe again because he cared. Senator Boschwitz, you've done so much, but what you did for Social Security is the finest thing of all. Senator Rudy Boschwitz. Well, are we down to the final eight minutes of Class A basketball in the state of Minnesota for the 83-84 season? They started working early November, Tom, and it's all come down to eight minutes for the state championship. Westby and Glowacki of Potter. Glowacki got the tip. Wolf comes away with it. Fourth quarter is underway. Winona Cotter leading 49-46. Scott Galkowski in and out. Wolf was knocked down, and here is a foul called on Glowacki. It was a rebounding foul. Uh, they got the shot they wanted. Uh, they set up uh, Glowacki out of the timeout. He missed the shot, and they got the foul on the rebound. Now he's 0 for 3 in the second half after hitting 8 of 11 from the floor in the first half. Here they come back to the 2-3 zone again out of the timeout, or out of the end of the quarter. Bowler on Todd Westby. Ball was almost knocked up close to the cylinder by one of the Cotter players, and now Winona Cotter with the ball in the three-point lead. Staying with their trapping defense. Almost traveling was well lost out travel. They're really keeping an eye on him. Glowacki. Wolf back to Glowacki. The trap does have Cotter a little bit out of sync. Boy, Glowacki could have gone to his right. Now up and scoring. And the shot is good. All the block Hasselow. and the basket. Oh, well, might have been on Hughesby. Here's the drive. Hughesby tries to start over to take the charge. He does get there late. The man, the move had already been started. Uh, he got there just a second late, and Paskowitz scored. That's three on Hughesby, who's had a good ball game today with eight points. And Paskowitz, who had four free throws in the first half, has added six field goals here in the second half. He's had a strong second half. He does not get the three-point play, and but he gets the rebound, scrambles for it. A good hustling play by Paskowitz. Malley almost lost it. Now he did lose it. That's Roller. Malley tried to stop him from getting the layup, and he grabbed him on the wrist as he went down. And Not a bad foul. It's yeah, they had a three-on-one, Jim, so that stopped that play. Yeah, it, it was, was a good foul under the circumstance. Staying in the 2-3 zone now. There's the ball rejected out of there, and there'll be a foul. They're seeking out Glowacki. That's his fourth. Mark that down. They reversed the ball to Rogostad against the zone. He snuck in behind the defense, got the ball. They did block the shot, but he'll get the two free throws. Interesting foul situation here. Now, Glowacki, their big pivot man, will have to be rested. He's got four fouls, and that's also the fifth team foul on Cotter in the second half. Pelican Rapids has only been whistled once. So they've got some fouls to give in a key situation. They've been staying in that zone, and you don't fall much out of zone defense. His uh, brother Jeff Glowacki, a junior, 6'3", comes in. That's Vogelstad at the line. There you see Jim Glowacki. That's Jim's first point since the first quarter when he hit his first four shots. 51-47, Winona Cotter with a lead in the ball. 6.35 left in regulation time. Malley, he wants to go inside. Pelican shuts him off. Pastowitz, Galkowski, yes! If they double team the ball, somebody's open. If you move it quickly enough, you'll find them. Six point lead now for Winona Connor. Westby. Ball is knocked out of his hands, but he was fouled. Reaching in is Paskowitz. Westby looked for the jump shot uh, right here. It wasn't there, so he went with the penetrating move. He got bumped. They called it on 44 Paskowitz. That's his first foul of the game. Westby. He got it. Well, he blew a drive on that release. That's his third straight free throw without a miss. He's going for his 20th point if he can hit the second one. He's got it. Uh, what 
tournament he's been having. He's the tournament's leading scorer. 66 points for him now in two plus games. Time up on the floor with the score. Winona Connor 53, Pelican Rapids 49. I'm Bob Ryan, and I don't enjoy tax time any more than you do. But I'm not forgetting the most important tax deduction of 1983. It's my Golden Eagle individual retirement account at Home Federal. And it means I pay less tax because what I save comes right off the top of my gross income, and I pay no tax on the money until I withdraw. Now, don't miss this year's most important tax deduction, and you don't need to spend to get it. When you think IRS, think Golden Eagle IRA at Home Federal. Get the deduction and save, too. Listen, what do we eat out? <laughs> Barbara, I did it right this time. I seasoned it with garlic, salt, and paprika, and then I put it in the oven and set the timer for two hours, and I turned on the wrong oven. <laughs> now all we've got is hot, dirty dishes. <laughs> Why did I ever let Julie move in with her? I knew Julie was too young and irresponsible to be on her own. Julie's at the age of consent. Don't think that doesn't worry me. <laughs> Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. on KTTC. Net, the 63-year-old warrior from Winona Connor, the winningest coach in Minnesota history. Now, easy on that age, Tom. We're not that far rear. <laughs> Only one team foul on Pelican Rapids in this half. You notice I gave no comment on that whatsoever. I noticed you stifled a yawn. 53-49, Connor with a lead, 5.55 remaining in regulation. Galkowski. Kapaskowitz, Wolf cutting, and the shot is good by Jeff Glowacki. Great pass by Wolf along the baseline. Well, that was a big basket. He has only five points in the tournament, a big two points right there. Roller, that'll be off to the left. Pulled away by Tom Paskowitz. The Pelican Rapids is going to take advantage of the foul situation. They've got to start closing it right now. That could be a disadvantage not having those fouls. Malley works inside to Paskowitz. It's batted away. That's what Pelican needs to do. Westby, oh. the ball is stolen right away by Malley. A good defensive play. Malley came back and really made a big steal in that situation. Five minutes left to go. Good save. No, he didn't save it. He stepped on the line. I had one foot on his sideline. Malley's a hustler. He hasn't scored in this game, but he has made up for it in other ways. Pelican Rapids going to have to make a decision on whether to come full court pressure here if they score. We're under five minutes left in the game. They can afford to gamble outside. Rogelstad, he has not been heard from for a while, but he's heard then. 55-51, Winona Cotter. 440 left in the game. They're moving their half court pressure up further now. Malley is not very tall. He's easy to trap. Oh, there's a the turnover. That went off the knees of Jeff Glowacki. And they out can, of bounds. They can afford to gamble, Coach, because they can get some fouls out of the way from That's the basket. absolutely right. They can play aggressive trapping defense. Algen. Malley dribbled right to the side, and that's the trap area. Algen has not spent much time at all sitting on the bench. He's been up and he's giving directions right now. Larson. That's him, and he got it. A big two points. He's got him. Pelican Rapids. Larson now gets his team to it in two. Same trap area. Inside, there's a trouble with that kind of a defense, but he missed the shot. And Hughesby, quickly, to Westby, who slows it down. Good decision. He was one on four. Better off the wait and get the ball reversed. Larson, Larson, same shot. He likes that shot from the free throw line. Pulled out of there by Paskowitz. Well, they had everything sealed up inside. They really did. Cutter is fundamentally sound. They picked off the board on that rebound. That's There's a good a foul. foul there. He was trying to call a timeout, and while he looked to the referee to call the timeout, they came over and he got the foul. I don't know if he called or if he just gave him the timeout. Okay, timeout on the floor with the score. Winona Cotter, 55, Pelican Rapids, 53. One glass of milk has enough vitamins and calcium to help the average person through an ordinary day. But who has ordinary days? Wow. Milk's got more of what you need to make it through your day. Milk helps keep you going, feeling great all the way. That extra glass of milk every day gives you more of what you need to make it through your day. Feeling strong, feeling great.
This is KTTC country. Eight counties from Winona to Austin, Red Wing to Cresco, Iowa, recognized as having the most people living, working, and shopping in the Rochester area 365 days a year. Only one medium, KTTC television, covers the entire area and shows your product or service with motion and color to all your customers. Sales representative Candace Stafford can show you how easy it is. Call Candace at 288-4444 to see for yourself. Saturday nights are rock. Ball game is as tight as we thought that it would be. A two-point difference. As close as it's been, Tom, oddly enough, there's only been one lead change. Pelican Rapids got off to the quick start in the first quarter. Carter caught him. There have been seven ties. Ball almost thrown away. Golaki is back in. The Jim Golaki shot comes up short by Wolf. And Pelican Rapids, have, they have the ball and a chance to tie it up. The Carter fans at that end don't agree with the call, but it was deflected out. I'll tell you, from our angle here, I thought it went through cleanly. Mm -hmm. It missed uh, everything but the bottom part of the net. It just kind of swished it. They're posting up Westby inside. They're going to try to swing the ball and get it to Westby. Vogelstad. Yes, we're tied up. Three minutes left. And tied 55 all. We were tied at the half, 32-32. Gonna try to work the ball inside the uh, one of their big men, Glowicki, probably. Malley almost walked with that ball. Wolf, they've got Glowicki inside. That's Galkowski to Wolf. Cotter sending players through the zone, telling his players, "Don't stand still." And it is pulled away, deflected and intercepted by Hughesby. Tried to force it and ran into yeah. four Pelican Rapid players. They all collapsed on the ball. An excellent defensive play. Pelican Rapids, they know what it's like to finish second. That's what they finished in 1977. They've not won it. Cotter is looking for their third championship. Westby, in and out. Jump ball. It was a good call. It was, uh, they both got it at exactly the same time. The two big guys. Westby hit eight of his first ten, but he's gone over the last four now from the floor. That's a little bit of tiredness. You play three consecutive days, and not only the physical tiredness, but the emotional strain is tremendous. Lowacki and Hughesby on the jump, and Winona Cotter coming away with the basketball. We are at two minutes left, and we're tied at 55. Pelican Rapids is really doing a good job in their defense now, collapsing down on the basketball. Has a rather uh, Glowacki, Jim Glowacki. He was spelled nicely earlier by his brother. Coach Hogan called yeah. for the trap. He wants him to come out and double team the ball. They got fouls to take. Malley. There it Ooh. is. That time, Paskowitz was cutting inside and the pass was to the outside. John Neff about fell off the bench on that. Uh, they had their man set up. Now they're going to spread the floor. Are they going to go for the, the, well, two things. Try to draw the defense out and get a shot. Or if that doesn't work, work it down and get a final shot. That's what they're looking for, the layup or the free throws. Connor is not anxious to come get him, but Coach Nett just signaled to come put pressure on the ball. This is uh, where it helps to have a couple of quick guards where they can come out there and put some pressure on it. Well, Westby's going to have the ball about 80% of the time, I'm sure. Connor's been here before. They've been in this situation. They're not going to panic. They're going to play solid defense. 45 seconds left. Westby, Rogelstad. Everybody in the house is expecting Westby to get the shot. Don't be surprised if Larson sneaks in behind and gets the shot. He's a good shooter, and they're going to have to try to double team Westby, and that may leave Larson open. Or Rogelstad. Rogelstad, too. He's a definite possibility. He likes to shoot from outside. 20 seconds. They got the count on. The count now he warns them to come play basketball. 12 seconds. Yeah. Westby to move the play. Westby. He got it. Time out call. Talk about perfect strategy. They milked the clock to under 10 seconds. And then Westby drilling a shot from far out as Pelican Rapids takes a two-point lead with six seconds left. The place erupted when he took that shot. Everybody knew him. Connor had him defended. They had two men in the area. But at 6-4, he just rose up and shot it over him. Now they've got to come down, take a hurried shot. I look for Pelican Rapids to come down floor for a little pressure.
looked pretty cool in that huddle. He, he didn't really order anybody to set up any particular player. I think that's good strategy because if you set up a particular player, you can't get him with the ball. The team will, you know, they'll really get disoriented. Now, the first man that pops open, once they get it down there, is going to take the shot. This is uh, what I expected out of Pelican Rapids. They're going to make them work to get the ball up, use some of that time. All right, Galkowski, oh, the ball is stripped the away. Logo stands, scores, it'll be all over. What a time to steal the ball. Let's get a shot of Galkowski. Uh, your heart goes out to him, number 30, right I there. I think they may have called a foul. No basket. Oh, my. A foul call. He called a foul on the steal. Suddenly. Oh. Suddenly, when we think the game is over, it's not over. A foul has been called. Well, now, which way did they call the foul? On the steal or after the steal? I don't know. That's what we're waiting. Good. Can we? Let's try to go to the wireless mic. Here's the play. You can see uh, Glowicki coming up the floor. There's the, the oh, please, bat steal. of the ball. He got, got the ball. We're going to see right now what the call was. Yep. Okay, apparently the call... If you look at the expression on John Nett's face, it's on the steal, I think. No, it's on Galkowski, his fourth. So the foul is against Cotter. Rogelstad came in and got the ball. Let's listen. They well, the board, yeah, they might. They had to call it on. On Pelican Rapids, but they get the foul up on the board against Connor. But if it's Connor's ball, and Pelican Rapids had the foul to take. Here's the call right here. They call a foul, but it's only their second team foul. So rather than going to the free throw line, they'll get the ball on a throw in on the side with two seconds to go. Uh, so the call was right here. They called the foul, uh, but that's only their second team foul. They're not in the bonus, so it's Connor's ball side court. Foul on Rogelstadt. They just now put it up on the board. Even the scorekeepers are confused. Oh, that's amazing. Looked like a clean steal, but again, you had a different official's angle. The foul nullified the steal by Rogelstad and the basket. A crowd of 10,888 seeing another great game here. Two seconds left. Inbound play. Galkowski. It is short, partially blocked. It's all over. The championship goes to Pelican Rapids. It was everything we thought it would be, and you can see a, a jubilant Pelican Rapids team. They won this state championship. It wasn't given to them. They came out and earned it. Well, they held Cotter to just six points in the final quarter. And it was Pat Westby's 18-foot jumper with six seconds to go that snapped the tie in favor of Pelican Rapids. He wound up with 22 can hold their heads high. You see uh, Pelican Rapids is really rejoicing at the other end of the court. John Nett has called his team around him. He's got his arms around his ball players. He's talking to them and saying, hey, you gave a great effort. They're all applauding now. Uh, right here, you can see Coach Nett. He's telling his guys, you came a long way. Let's listen to that if we can. He just said, we're proud. We're proud. We came close. Well, I'm happy for Rex Haugen because for him it was seven long years before he had another chance to win it. And he and Nett are now one and one in championship games. <laughs> That's right. He, he lost it to Nett in 77. What an ending. All the drama in the world. You had Galkowski trying to get it into the front court. He was fouled by Rogelstad, who stole the ball, went in and scored, no basket. And they had two seconds to get a shot off. They got a fairly good shot off, but it was partially deflected and fell short. And what a great field in the Class A tournament. All of them got here on rank, and we had a handful of one, two-point ball games. Every game almost was contested right down to the wire. If you weren't emotionally involved with either team and just paid your way in to see a fine high school basketball game, you got your money's worth in this Class A championship battle. All right, let's go down out of Julie Perlt, and they will be awarding Tony Spelt the medals. Tony 
of good sportsmanship this past winter. And the evaluation committee has selected as the Class A Basketball Sportsmanship Trophy winners, St. Anthony Village High School. Please step forward and receive a trophy. championship trophy. for those youngsters. They're going over and presenting the trophy to their fans, saying it is ours. We can take it home, and it'll rest in their trophy case right next to that second-place trophy earned in 1977. Tom, we've got to mention also the class act of Winona Cotter. Oh. Uh, so often after a game, the players really will walk up and get their medals. Or, you know, it's, it's disappointing, but they were proud. They sprinted up and got them. They're having official team pictures taken now of the Cotter team, and uh, Coach Nett really prepared his kids mentally after that loss to, hey, you be proud, and, you know, you've nothing to be ashamed of. He's got tremendous control and respect of those kids. 
His very presence really adds more dignity to an already dignified great tournament. Let's go down to the floor and Jeff Passo. Well, what a nail biter with me. The Pelican Rapids Class A champions are Coach Rex Hausen. A wild game. Well, I tell you, it was played right from the heart and maybe a little bit deeper. I, uh, we, we play on a lot of emotion, and when things work out, we become very happy people. And we really did have to come deep tonight to, this afternoon to play. Sounded like you used uh, all of your voice to this one. Yeah, I guess I did. Uh, I don't know. Put some Willie Nelson music on, will you? So we can get the party going. <laughs> I'll tell you what. 1.32 to play. You get the ball. You decide to go for the last shot. A lot of time to kill on that clock before you take that last shot. Well, Carter didn't put a lot of pressure on us either and kind of played into our hands a little bit, I thought. Uh, I thought maybe they'd come out and trap a little bit and get us and move the ball around. But there was absolutely no doubt. We struggled so long to get it tied. When you get the ball back with two minutes, you're not going to give it up. You're not going to give the other team a chance to win again if you can help it. And as long as we don't have a 30-second clock, there was no way we we're going to shoot before about six seven seconds sweet revenge you're in this game at 77 against Winona Cotter that time you lost it by 13 this time you win it by two well I prefer not re not revenge it was uh, Cotter versus Pelican 1984 a completely different thing uh, not re not revenge but just uh, a great ball game I'm sure that no one felt that either team played very poorly today I thought it was a great game it sure was let's talk to a few of the players including this fellow right here Pat Westby 22 points on this year you made the one that won it. Tell us about the offensive set you were in and what the plan was. I don't even know. I think they were in a zone, and, and Peter Willard had been setting a pick for me, and he'd been setting all night long. And he just set another one for me, and, and the shot always went down, just, and uh, that's what we wanted to take. <laughs> you guys jumped off to a quick lead, uh, six, eight points or so. Then all of a sudden, Cotter came back and made a game of it. For a while, did you think it was going to be easy, or did you expect it to be tough? We expected it to be tough. We knew we wanted, we wanted to come out and do what we did, but uh, <laughs> look, we just prevailed and held off at the end. Steve Hughes being the center, kind of rough underneath there, tough inside tonight. Yes, it was. A couple of fouls there on you. I noticed you were getting a little emotional. What was the coach saying to you at that point? Uh, he didn't really say much. He, I think he was behind me, I hope, but uh, <laughs> it was just tough underneath there, and I, just, I was just hoping I wouldn't fall. I wanted to stay in there, and they just things got easier. Or I played better. I don't know what it was, but things just came together, and I got to stay in there. Where's Mr. Rogelstad? He hit the one that tied it. Here's the man right here. You got the tying bucket with about three minutes left. What was going through your mind? Were you the guy that was supposed to shoot at that point? Well, I think anybody could have shot, but I wanted to get it. Uh, I wanted it all the way. You had a hot hand today. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. You guys are the Class A champions. All right. Congratulations. Nice job by Carter Pelican Rapids, the Class A state champions. Well, this moment will be with them for the rest of their lives. And congratulations to them and the class act from Winona Cotter for giving us a great great basketball game. The final score, and we'll be back, I might add, uh, as Jim and Joe and I will have some final thoughts. The final score in that game, Pelican Rapids, 57, Winona Cotter, 55. Hi, I'm Mary for you, two heavy food stores in Rochester. This week's specials include Star Kiss Tuna, six and a half ounce, oil or water pack, 59 cents, Wilderness Cherry Pie Filling, 21 ounce can, 88 cents, and Wilson Corn King Whole Ham, five to eight pound average, just 153 a pound. With twice as many smiles and twice as many aisles, thank you for shopping at High Beach. So you've decided to buy a new car and you'd like to have it rust proofed and you've seen our ads on television and like many people, you're wondering why Trimline charges so much less than our competition. Well, let me assure you that we use only 3M rust proofing material top quality. It's low overhead and high volume. That's what keep our prices down. You could pay much more, but you still wouldn't get lifetime warranty and nationwide service. You could pay much more, but why should you? Call us. We're back live now at the Civic Center here in St. Paul, where we've just witnessed a great championship game for Class A, and I might add that St. Anthony won the third place game before we get into our recap here by a score of 73 to 55 over St. John's Prep. Joe, uh, I know you're going to be heading back to uh, Florida tomorrow, but we have uh, another couple of games for you to work tonight. But before we talk about those games tonight, this game here was, I think, everything we thought that it would be as we were talking before the game. We said, hey, this two great teams. Best ball game of the tournament, I think. Maybe the best two teams in the state. We'll know tonight. Of course, Double A have their backers, and uh, they've got two strong ball clubs. I guess it, this is a table setting, more or less, and we've got two undefeated teams going for the Double A title tonight. Should be a dandy. Okay, uh, let's go down now. I understand we have John Nett down on the floor for an interview. Let's go down to the floor. 
All right, Tom, with me, John Nett. John, what a great ball game. Your kids battled uh, long and hard, but came up two points short. Well, Pelican Rapids has a great ball team, and, and uh, we knew it would be a tough game for us, and we knew we'd almost have to play a perfect ball game, and our kids did come out, and, and in fact, Pelican got that big lead on us, and I thought it was uh, all gone then, but they showed a lot of character, and they came back, and, and they fought hard, and uh, it's just too bad, uh, you know, one team has to lose, but uh, if we lost, I, I'm glad Rex Hogan won. <laughs> This whole Class A tournament, so much fun. All the teams here unranked coming in. Nobody really knew who was the favorite. Maybe there wasn't a favorite. That made it awful interesting. Well, that's right. And, and this is what it's all about. We, we end up like this, and it's a, it's a close ball game. Uh, uh, we can be proud, and they can be proud, and, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, we'll continue to play this way. I notice your young men held their head high even in defeat. Well, we have to. We, we win, uh, you know, humbly, and we lose with grace. Uh, we, we tell them that. And, and it's in life, you know, you can't quit when you lose. You've got to get ready to play the next battle. John, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for taking so much time to be with us. Thank you very much for having me. Good luck to you. Yep. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you very much, Jeff, and to Coach John Nett. Jim Dutcher, I think that uh, you have stood uh, in those shoes before and been asked those questions. You've also, also stood in the, the winner's shoe. It's a tough moment for John Nett. Yes, it is, uh, but he was part of his basketball team. He had every right to be. It wasn't like you came out and played poorly in a state championship game. Uh, they shot over 50%. Uh, they rebounded strong. Uh, they, they kept their turnovers to a minimum. Uh, but they faced a Pelican Rapids team that played just a, a solid game. Only six turnovers in the championship game. That's unbelievable. That's really taking care of the ball. Pelican Rapids shot 57%. When the game was on the line, they went to the guy who's carried him all year, and he delivered. Coach Haugen said he felt that uh, Winona Counter may have played into their hands a little bit by not coming out and putting more pressure on the ball rather than letting the clock tick down until the final six seconds and uh, where Westby finally took that shot. I'm not, I don't agree uh, with that. It's uh, a situation where they're shooting the one-on-one -on -one free throw. You can't foul in that situation. Uh, they knew pretty well that Westby was going to take the shot, and they had two men there. He just hit a heck of a shot. He hit a jumper from perimeter. That's the shot that they wanted to force. Uh, unfortunately for Winona Cotter, uh, it went in, and uh, fortunately for Pelican Rapids, they're state champs. How in the world do you you find a difference. Uh, usually at the end of a ball game, you say, well, this is, the game went this way because of this and that, but there's really not a lot you can look at in this game. I mean, these two teams are so closely matched. No, they were. Uh, Pelican Rapids got the, the quick start, and then Cotter came back, and Cotter led all the way. There were eight ties. They led all the way until the game-winning shot, then after they took the lead for the first time. But it was about as evenly matched as you could make it. So the championship goes to Pelican Rapids and that great two-point win over Winona Cotter, and we have a couple of games tonight as we uh, get set to preview those games for you, we'll be on the air at 7 o'clock. Bloomington Kennedy, uh, a team that I think really uh, an outstanding basketball team. I do not think we, we saw the, uh, the great play that Kennedy uh, can give us, but uh, Minneapolis North had something to do with that last night as they simply took the game away from Kennedy uh, in the final six minutes of that ball game. And it'll be Kennedy against St. Paul Central, and it'll be Minneapolis North against White Bear Lake. Now, do we have time to come back for a little more recapping? We do, and we will do that. We want to remind you now, this is the 1984 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament.